Hello, this is Lake Hammond of the KSTP radio party line and the call to Annie Ross. We might ask our listeners, have you heard Annie Ross? Well, she's something very special in the world of jazz. Annie, are you there? Yes, I am, Ray, right here. Everything from uh, numbers like Twisted to, um, well, such uh, rhymes and uh, feats as singing a song of Basie are some of your accomplishments, plus shows in London. Yes, that's right. How are you? I'm fine, Lee. Just wonderful. And uh, we're down here at the Key Club. It's our last night. And we've just come off after a, a very uh, dynamic set. <laughs> In which you were riding along Avenue C, yes. looping it up with one o'clock jump and other uh, mad and crazy patchworks of jazz. True. <laughs> Annie, uh, actually, what most people don't know is that you're not just a human voice, you're a trumpet sometimes, and you're a piano. Yes, that's right. Trumpet, when, piano, and clarinet. When when did you first hear jazz? Oh, my goodness. I think the first time I heard jazz was uh, Paul Whiteman when I was about four years old. And where did you hear it? In New York. I used to uh, play with his little daughter, who lived in the same apartment building, and he used to have a show every week, which was an amateur show, and the, the eventual big prize was uh, a six-month Hollywood contract. And so I talked him into putting me on the show, and at the time I had a very thick Scotch accent, and I got on the show and I sang a Scotch song that my father had written, and I won the contest. Well, there's a reason for your Scotch accent, is the fact that you do come from Scotland, don't you? Well, my family does, but I was the only one born south of the border. I was born in London. In the Soho district? No, in Mitcham, Surrey, as a matter of fact. It's where they make the violets. At least that's what they tell me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we learned some of your personal history. Well, it, it's nice to know about your early beginnings, Annie Ross. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lee. Annie Ross, are you there? Yes, I am. How are you? Fine. It's nice to hear you. And, uh, you know, a long time ago when I met you in New York, you were, um, you were doing some work uh, that was very much related to that jazz artist by the name of King Pleasure. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. But since then, you've come under the influence of John Hendricks and Dave Lambert, or vice versa. They've come under your influence. Which is it? Well, that's very hard to say because John and Dave, I'm sure, I know for a fact, have been singing very modern music for a long, long time. And they, I'm sure, heard King Pleasure at the same time I did. And uh, I think John was probably writing things of that nature, if not at that time, shortly afterward. So it's really hard to say who was, you know, the originator or the first, because long before King Pleasure, there was Leo Watson. And before that, there was scat singing. That's right. And before Louis... that, there was the age of the caveman. <laughs> and a few Neanderthals, too. Yeah. I might add. <laughs> Just recently, you completed an album for World Pacific in which you work over material by Leonard Bernstein and Ralph Burton and John Mercer and Harold Arlen and a few others. Do you have any favorite show composers, those who write show music? Well, I love Leonard Bernstein. I think he's just great. And I love uh, Harold Arlen and Yip Harburg. And, of course, I love Cole Porter. I love Rogers and Hart. And I love Gershwin. And we could go on. And we could go on and on and on. Uh, do you look for lyrics first or, or lyrics and music? Do well, go together? lyrics always intrigue me, but I also love beautiful melodies such as Misty by Earl Garner, I think is gorgeous. I, don't, I think I would sing Misty even if the words weren't as nice as they are. And they are nice because they belong to the pen of a very talented guy. Let's see, his name is Mr. Burke, isn't it? Johnny Burke. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who writes elegant lyrics and stories. He certainly does. When you lived overseas and, and were growing up in the area of, of England and Scotland, were you listening to jazz? Well, as a matter of fact, you know, I came over from there when I was four and a half. And then I lived in California, and I really began to listen to jazz. I used to do, you know, Ella Fitzgerald arrangements when I was a kid. And I used to listen to people like Billie Holiday, Billy Eckstein when he first started, and I still listen to Billy now, and Earl Garner, Calvin Jackson, and Duke Ellington, and Bessie Smith, and Stan Kenton, 
Anita O'Day, uh, Slim Gaylord, oh, Fats Waller, everybody. Your taste is universal. Yes, it is. I like anything that's done well. Thank you, Annie Ross. It's nice to talk to you on our Jazz Corner party line. Thank you, Leigh. Daniel Halpern, somewhere around London, England, remarked that uh, Annie Ross is slightly Merlin-esque. She can cast a brand of spell night after night, has grown uh, with a kind of sporadic success. I remember her in a West Side club in New York called The Downbeat, and she was singing a wonderful song. What was the name of that song, Annie? Gosh, I don't know. Was it was it something uh, Rogers and Hart like? Uh, Nobody's heart belongs to me. It could have very easily been, yes. Did you sing it as a trio? Or no. Or duet with another gal? Blossom Deary. Uh huh. She was playing and you were singing. Yes, that's right. That's what I remember now. Ah yes. What's your attitude about oh say on nightclubs? Well, I like them very much. Uh, I love the theater. That's my really true love. That's what I, I wanted to get to. What particularly do you, does the theater offer you? Well, uh, I think it's a kind of an ingrown thing, a family thing, an association kind of thing. Uh, a very sentimental. Um, oh, somewhere way back in my background, you know, it kind of... Well, it does touch me very much. I get very thrilled when... Uh, I go into a theater and I go through the overture and the uh, the dancing and the singing and and just the whole atmosphere of theater. I well, now, your that. family, Annie, uh, uh, were music hall troopers, weren't they? Yes, they still are. They're still working. You have a brother who is the first to uh, represent uh, the area of Scotland yes. in a command performance, as I understand it. That's right, yes. What is his, uh, what is his work in the theater? Well, my brother, uh, since we were from a theatrical family and toured with my mother and father, we had to learn to do everything. So consequently, my brother is, uh, first and foremost, I'd say he's a comedian, a very good actor. Uh, he's a singer. He dances. Not a, He's not a great dancer, but he moves well. <clears throat> and uh, a very handsome, good-looking, wonderful brother. <laughs> It sounds like a, a most talented family, and your brother seems seems to be the leader of the group. But yourself, now, let's speak of you for just a moment. What have you done in the theater? In the theater, well, I was in a show called Burlesque, which was done in London. It's the old burlesque, which was uh, done many years ago with Bert Lahr, and before that with Hal Skelly and Barbara Stanwyck. And I got into the chorus with an understudy of the lead. I couldn't have the lead because I was only 17 at the time. But I had the understudy, and eventually the leading lady, uh, a kind of a Cinderella thing, she did get sick, and I took over for her. And so I played the lead in London for four months. Well, that all is a, a most diverse and uh, spangled background. What's your ambition? My ambition? I want to be... Um, Oh, let me see. I want to be able to do many, many things. I want to be able to work a theater if I want to, go into a certain club that I like if I want to, uh, have connections with uh, intelligent kind of pictures. If I want to do a picture, I want it to be a, a really intelligent kind of vehicle. And uh, I also want to make very good records. Whatever I do, though, I want to do well. Annie, because you are versatile, I'm sure you'll do all those things, and we wish you the very best of everything. Thank you, Les, so, so much. It's nice to talk with you, and uh, lots of good luck along the way. We'll be uh, listening for your sing-songs of Basie as a trumpet uh, voice, as perhaps a piano or a clarinet, <laughs> and also, too, we'll look for you as perhaps uh, something very special in the world of the theater. Thank you. Good night to you, Annie Ross.